it sounds so difficult, Andy. How do parents and guardians cope with the death of a child? In my role as trying to um, guide them with how to manage this time, I think I, I turn to the simplest things initially, things like remembering to breathe. Literally, you can hold so much tension that you forget to do those things. And to move to the idea of, of sometimes needing to negotiate a minute at a time, not an hour, not a day. To, to just really compress how you're going to survive this. Um, try to provide education on what, what some of the signs and symptoms are of grief, that it affects you emotionally, spiritually, cognitively, physiologically, because parents can feel they're going crazy, mm -hmm. and we want to be able to, I mean, it does feel like you're going crazy, but to validate for them um, some of the changes that will occur for you. And I think lastly, what I want to help parents do is move away from looking at the big picture, how I'm going to survive the rest of my life. That's way too much to negotiate early on and to, um, to give them the idea that there will be a, hopefully, what we're looking at is a slow softening over time. So if that thundercloud of grief is right in your face as you wake up every day pouring difficult, challenging emotions, um, perhaps give the image that that thundercloud will be there. They are going to negotiate this for the rest of their lives. They're not going to return to their former selves. But if we can gently move that cloud further away, and it still has the potential for pouring down all of that suffering, but that it's further away, and that it will soften over time, and be in view, but not completely controlling their every breath and every moment. So it never goes away. It's always a part of them. Yes. But they can manage it. That's, that's what we're working toward, absolutely. Tell us about how the death of a child impacts the parents and guardians and siblings' faith beliefs. I think faith can be um, a fantastic support for families. That, that can be the one area where there isn't questioning. That there can be questioning about all these other things, why and how and what if. Um, but we believe that our child is in a better place and uh, we have faith in God. So it can be um, an unbelievable support. What can also occur, however, is that if you held a particular belief all of your life and then lose a child and then that belief does not feel appropriate anymore. For example, if you always had faith that a person who was dying was going to a better place and would be in the hands of God, when you lose your child and suddenly feel like there is no better place for my child than with me, then that belief isn't comforting anymore. And um, there can be some significant spiritual and religious crisis. And so what I really hope for, both for me and clergy leaders, is tolerance as people make their way. Um, they may shift their belief system. They may return to it after some real struggle um, with some of those belief systems. I really try, when I work with families, to open them not just to religious faith, but to spiritual development. Are there some other ways they can feel spiritual connection that are um, helpful to them and create greater peace, whether that's through meditation or yoga um, or creativity and art or volunteering? What, what are some of the other ways that they speak spirit, seek spiritual comfort? Let's talk about when they're siblings and how does this impact a sibling, brothers and sisters? And do they feel shortchanged or do they feel sad? How, how do they react when this is all happening? My first comment about that, if you, if you have siblings and you think about your siblings, is the idea of shared history that you carry together. You know, siblings have a particular view in a family of what they've been through. And the idea that that is um, either not fully developed if the child was young or that it's cut off at a certain point and that the remainder of your family history is, is always going to have this gap in it. Um, so just imagine as a sibling trying to negotiate that. Um, and of course, there's, there's the loss of some relationship with your parent. And let's look at best case scenario, parents who have been very aware of what siblings are going through and are preparing them and communicating with them, even those siblings lose a part of that parental relationship as the parents are grieving. So those are, are very, very difficult challenges. And whether they feel shortchanged or um, are understanding, it, it makes an impact. I'm not going to talk about you know, what age you are, as there's lots of information about that. And, but, but, but what we can establish is that it's a lifelong process, that at different developmental stages, you'll renegotiate this loss. 
So there are two things that I work very hard to achieve with siblings. The first is that there are doors that are open, whether that be from people like me, from family members, school teachers, that there are people there when they need to and when they are ready to process this with them. And this is not something that you're supposed to negotiate privately and on your own if that's not helpful to you. So whether they want to talk in the moment or not, um, wherever they're at is okay, whatever emotions they're experiencing, if they're avoiding, if they're very emotional, whatever, wherever they're at is where they are, and that's okay, but to remember that the doors are always open. Um, and the second piece for them to remember, and this, I know in some family systems, siblings will act out, mm -hmm. you know, as a way to get attention. What I tend to look for very carefully, though, is those siblings who overcompensate, who become hypervigilant about how their parents are doing, and feel like they're responsible for them being okay. They want to be the perfect child? They want to be the perfect child. They don't want to talk about their own grief because they feel like their parents have been through enough. They watch from across the room to see mom's emotional response and are there in a second if she showed, you know, that she's shedding a tear. And so those are the kids that I will talk with very openly with their families. That their job is to be themselves. That the parents will reach out for others in their lives to support them through this grief. And that the sibling needs to live their life fully and, yes, be with their peers and do what's important for them and to not feel responsible to make everything okay in this family system.